Hey, fan, it's Mia for a comic show. Uh, we survived Black Friday. Thanks for coming out. That was fun, crazy, crazy weekend. And uh, this is this Wednesday is one of those things that uh, in the comic industry we call it a fifth week, where there's five Wednesdays in uh, in the month, and DC puts out annuals for it. And it's kind of like, yeah, okay, thanks. And, you know, like I, I guess that's cool. But this this time, these annuals were actually really good. Like I really liked it. Batman. It's the new uh, Rebirth Batman annual number one, and it had a lot of good stories. The Tom King opening story was really touching and funny, and I love how Tom King works humor in to, um, to stories that otherwise you know, probably wouldn't have humor, and it's not slapsticky. It's just a little, little joke here or there. Uh, he's done it with Sheriff of Babylon to, to um, uh, just excellent reviews uh, and Snyder is on here because you can't keep him away from Batman Scott Snyder's Batman story was great and then Paul Dini does a story with Harley Quinn and Batman and uh, Paul Dini and Harley Quinn you can't pass that up you know he created her and then there's a few other stories one at the end by Steve Orlando that leads into something going on in uh, 2017 with Batman so it's definitely worth getting it definitely has big writers, writers doing Batman right now, and also Paul Dini, who's great, and Steve Orlando, who will be doing something with Batman in the near future. Moving on to Superman, this was also freaking awesome. And to me, I have to admit, I'm a little biased because I love Swamp Thing. And not only do I love Swamp Thing, I love the hell out of when Swamp Thing and Superman team up. Like when they showed up together for a few panels in uh, Snyder's run, I, I squeed. The classic story with uh, Swamp Thing Superman that Alan Moore did was uh, phenomenal, and this was great. And it's Paul, it's um, it's Tomasi. So it's Peter Tomasi, and it's uh, Gleason, the regular artist on uh, plenty of Superman stuff. Uh, it's if you're reading the book, you seriously should get it. It's not necessarily necessary, but. It has a big deal thing that happens in it that I thoroughly enjoyed. And there is a big reason for Superman and Swamp Thing, specifically this Superman and Swamp Thing, to team up and, of course, fight and then like help each other and all that stuff that, that um, you know, heroes do. But Clark, Superman, Superman is a farmer. And Swamp Thing's the green. And, uh, and there, there you go. So I certainly love the issue, but I'm one of the biggest Swamp Thing fans you'll find, so I'm totally biased. If you are getting the Superman book, you should probably get it the same writer, and it is a cool fold twist to this Superman being out of sync with this earth, out of sync with this sun, out of sync with this green, with this world, and how he gets back into sync. And uh, DC also has this new talent showcase. It's eight bucks, it's, it's definitely worth it for the size, and it has a bunch of new talent, new writers, new artists, doing characters you know and love, and I really loved the John Constantine Hellblazer story. John Constantine, Zatanna, put them together. I love it. Uh, I liked how it ended. I want more of that. Uh, there are other fun stories in here. Kyle Rayner was great, and uh, there's plenty of stuff in here for you to like if you like the DC Universe, and it's cool that they're giving a, a spotlight to showcase new talent. Um, and moving on, DC Direct Currents is back. Direct Currents was something that they did back when I was like a little kid, it, uh, like 80s or 90s, probably the 80s actually. Direct Currents, it was like their previews, it's their, their stuff. And it's, it's very much, it's exactly like the Rebirth special that launched Rebirth, where it, um, it has wizard type news articles, news articles about upcoming things. And Super Sons is featured, the new uh, Batwoman is featured, the Suicide Squad, versus the um, Justice League is featured. And uh, we know who's behind the Suicide Squad versus Justice League because they're featured here. And uh, also Lobo's on the cover. And uh, it's cool, I, I like that. Everyone that comes into a comic shop will get this free because we ordered a lot of them. And I'm very excited about DC Rebirth as anyone that knows me knows. I've always had an affinity to DC Universe. And when they're not good, I'm very critical, and when they are good, I'm, I'm giddy. Moving on to Marvel, Inhumans vs. X-Men Zero. This, it's a zero issue. It bridges the gap between what we just read with 
the death of X-Men and what's coming up, but it also bridges the gap between death of X-Men and the things we've read in the X-Men books and in the Inhumans books for the last several months since Secret Wars that um, you know, they jumped the time and they never really filled in that time. And then Death of X filled in a lot of that time, but there's still some time. And <laughs> we get what Emma's been doing. Like, where has she been? What has she been putting together? And she's been doing a lot of machinations. And this heavily features Beast, but also Emma. And also, I'm excited. I'm excited for Inhumans vs. X-Men. They have a reason to fight. They have a reason to, to, uh, to have their, both of their species or subspecies continue. Uh, and we already know what's coming with the X-Men and more fun, lighthearted X-Men, the blue and gold and all that. So that's what I really want. But to get there through a big brawl between Inhumans and X-Men, fine. It's been brewing for so long. Let's, let's have it out. Let's, let's do it. Let's get it done. Hopefully it'll kick ass. I love Charles Soule. I love Jeff Lemire. It should be fun. Moving on, uh, a new now book, Robbie Reyes, Ghost Rider. You might know him from the Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV show. He had a series before, kind of a mini series. Um, this hits the ground running with several guest stars. Uh, totally awesome Hulk's in here at, at, from the very beginning. There's other guest stars that I'm not gonna mention as it goes. And if you like the previous book by uh, featuring him, definitely get it. If, uh, if you didn't, then don't, obviously. And if you were intrigued by the character from the TV show, this is definitely an easy jump on point for you. So check it out. And uh, not to be uh, outdone, outshined by DC, Marvel has a free previews this week too, but instead of it being like news articles and promo of um, you know, interviews and whatnot, it's just several pages of several books. So be sure to pick this up and see if two page, three page snippets uh, get your fancy, go for it. Um, and also Moon Knight, the Jeff Lemire, I love Jeff Lemire, Moon Knight volume one's out and it's just so crazy. Moon Knight works so well when you don't know what's real and what's not real because he doesn't know what's real and what's not real and he has multiple secret identities and it's all nuts and I love it. It's, it's a really great run of Moon Knight so check it out. And also Star Wars, you got an annual out featuring Princess Leia and a new female character who might be someone that factors heavily in the series later on. Um, this is a first appearance of a new character and uh, she saves Leia from the very beginning. It's not any spoiler. She saved Leia, she could give a shit about the rebellion. They ruined her life, but she hates the Empire too. She just wants things to go back to normal. Who can't relate to that? And, and there you go. So, you know, if, if you were one of those people that were like, I hate both Trump and Hillary, you know, you might really relate to this protagonist. And that's all the politics I'm gonna say. Not judging anything, not giving my spin on anything, just saying that this character is definitely, this new character, Bash, she's definitely um, hates both sides equally at the start of the book and then, then shit happens. Moving on to Image, I'm just loving when Image does this. There's a Third print of uh, number one, a second print of number two of Seven to Eternity, right the same week that issue three comes out. We'll have them all. You can jump on Rick Remender's newest book. It's good. Opinas on art, who was his partner in crime on Uncanny X-Force and other things that he did. And uh, it's like any Remender book, douchebag protagonists. Uh, his dad never gave in to the emperor, never gave in to power, didn't, would rather, you know, die on his feet than live on his knees and all that shit. And as soon as the dad dies, the son's like, eh, you know, tell me that deal about selling out. I'm, I'm, I might be interested. And uh, that's what we get. So I really enjoy it. So if you like anything Rick Remender's done, you will like Seven to Eternity because he does a similar thing with different settings and genres. I'm not saying that to criticize the guy. He's writing directly to my cold, cold heart and I enjoy everything he does. So if you are kind of a douchebag too, you will love everything Rick Mender does. Uh, moving on, Brian K. Vaughn, Saga's out. It deals with the cliffhanger last issue and then obviously sets up a cliffhanger this issue. 
and stuff happens in between that I'm not going to spoil. But Saga's out. And if you like Brian K. Vaughn and you haven't tried his Paper Girls because you thought it looked kind of not that catchy, what's the hook? Uh, check out this. You have a younger and older version of the same character. There's some weird kind of crazy astronaut stuff and um, a pterodactyl flying around. And uh, yes, there's nutty, nutty time travel. And uh, you get your 80s stuff, you get today's stuff, you get future stuff, and you get a lot of um, awesome storytelling by Brian K. Vaughn. And Cliff Chang's art isn't bad either. And finally, the um, kind of work for hire franchise stuff. Serenity has its second issue out, No Power in the Verse. I know a lot of Serenity fans had, um, had a, a sad time with, with uh, Shepard dying. And uh, you can continue the story with this. He's not in it, but uh, volume three hardcover is featuring all, all book. But uh, it's continuing. Chris Robertson, creator of uh, iZombie, is writing it. It's good. Continue Serenity. And finally, Mask, Mobile Armored Strike Command, issue one. If you played with these toys as a kid like I did, you'll want to read this. It's pure nostalgia. It was like I had my G.I. Joes and I had my Transformers. And these were like, what if G.I. Joe and Transformers had like a, a baby? It was like, OK, the dudes were in the vehicles, but they had masks, so they kind of looked like robots. And the vehicles transformed to other vehicles, not robots. And I, I got my, my green motorcycle that transformed to a helicopter. That was awesome. And uh, it's cool. And now, uh, because of uh, Revolution, the final issue is out this week, we have what is called the Hasbro universe. So everything now exists in the same universe. It's like, hey, guys, we've been here. Here we are. There's G.I. Joe. There's Transformers. There's ROM, Micronauts, Mask. Uh, I've heard Visionaries is coming. And whatever else they feel like throwing in. Um, <laughs> It's, it's ready to go. So if you like Mask, it's, it's actually well done. But you know, just for nostalgia, you could get it and um, get a, a kick out of that. I, I'm a sucker for that. I'm, I'm 40 years old, exactly. So the 80s were me playing with all these toys. And um, uh, they're just uh, tickling my fancy. They're totally pandering to me. And if they're pandering to you too, check it out. And uh, this Saturday, we're going to have our holiday party here in the Geek Easy Christmas party, lots of beer specials. Maybe a brewery will be out to, to have some free swag. And we'll have Christmas movies and camaraderie. And uh, we, we're having it a little early because there's all kinds of other people having Christmas parties here and Star Wars holiday parties here and whatnot throughout the rest of the month. So this Saturday, come party with us in the Geek Easy. It'll be a blast. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.